Thank you, and welcome to another lively edition of The Deadly Experiment, as seen on these public access stations that you will see at the end of the program. Watching the program is certainly something that we do find a lot of people doing nowadays. A lot of people recognize us and know us from this program. You'd be surprised. Many will probably not want to advertise that fact that they watch the deadly experiment, but they do, including most people who are highly connected in the structure of this area. Uh, of course, the politicians and the elections and all of that is something we try not to pay much attention to because there is no reason to. Uh, I go back to the days, folks, of Peter Van Dam running for governor of Rhode Island, Adam Verone. Uh, we had Ray Griner running for United States Senator uh, against Claiborne Pell in the Democratic primary. These things now have really shaded and, and moved into oblivion because now we're in the final stages of the one world system. Rhode Island doesn't count. The states don't count. As we're seeing with federal judges and tyrants on the Supreme Court, exercising authority they don't have to impose a sodomite agenda on America. That is, so-called gay marriages being legalized by edict or by judicial review, which is not allowed in our Constitution as far as appellate jurisdiction of the courts. All federal courts and all the Supreme Court's jurisdiction in appellate matters that come from the states is regulated by Congress, and Congress has never granted that authority for the states to hear these cases, or for the courts to hear these cases. Article 3, Section 2, Clause 2 tells us that. It's called the Exceptions Clause. But of course, law schools don't exist to teach law. They exist to teach what they call law. It is Talmudic law. It is Judaic law. And certainly, it is equity law. But it is not law. Now, today I'm going to have a special program. I'm going to introduce a little short video here. <laughs> it's entitled, Thanks Jews. Now, I don't refer to people who call themselves Jews on this program as Jews. They are not. See, Jews implies that they are part of Judah, and they are not. Now, who said so? I didn't say so. Jesus himself said so. In Revelation 2, verse 9, and Revelation chapter 3, and verse 9, both. In red letter, Jesus Christ said, I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Judah, Jews, Israel, and are not, but do lie, and are of the synagogue of Satan. Today we're going to talk a little bit about Cain's influence, Cain's seed lines influence on Jacob Israel, true Israel, and who are these people, and how they've destroyed so much in America through Hollywood and through, of course, the mass media particularly, the news media as it's called. So we're going to deal with that. But first I want to read to you from the book of Luke a little bit, chapter 20, where Jesus is speaking in parables. Jesus spoke in parables, he tells us, so that he could conceal his message from the worldly wise, from the scribes, the Pharisees, and those in control. Again, those who call themselves Jews, but are not. They had taken over, folks, they had taken over the ministry, if you will, of Israel. They had taken over the temple. And they did that when they were conquered and brought into the kingdom, the kingdom of Hibernian, the Hebrews, the Israelites, by the Israelites under John Hecrinus, the king of Israel. So they were conquered, they were brought in, unwisely, and they took over the temple. That's why you see Jesus kicking the tables over, the money changers. They were the synagogue of Satan, posing as real Israel in the temple. It's very important to understand this basic distinction. Those who say they are Israel but are not, and do lie, and those who are Israel, the ten lost tribes, and the other tribes, the other two, who are Judah and, uh, and of course, Benjamin and Levi. And we see that ten tribes went into captivity 
in Daniel. We see how they did go into captivity under the king, King Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebo means instruction, the instructed one, the one of learning, okay? And then, of course, the others, the other tribes, including Judah, went into Assyrian captivity in the Bible. It shows us that because of the sins they were committing against God. Now, today, America's in captivity. We're in deep captivity. And we see this evidenced when the Sodomites come out in full view. We're seeing America a Sodomite nation now. This is when captivity is deep, the economy is going sour, everything is just transferring itself to a lower level of existence. The America we once knew is no longer that America. Now it is in captivity of the mind. And so we're reaping it economically in terms of violence. <coughs> we're reaping it in terms of terror. We're reaping it in terms of the disarray and destruction of our family unit. We're reaping it in every form of human existence that we have in America today. Foreign intrigue, foreign interventionism, the continuing erosion of the borders because the borders are left wide open, and the aliens taking over. All of this was forecast again for the last times. Why is that possible? How is that possible? I think we'll show you in this very brief video and how we can be thankful for the influence of people who call themselves Jews but are not. They are not true Judah. They are Edomians. They are that synagogue of Satan, Cain's seed line, the seed line of Cain from Genesis. And you read about Cain in Genesis 3, 4, 5, and 6, and Cain was the first murderer in the Adamic world. He murdered his own brother, righteous Abel. Abel was a sheep herder, like the sheep that Jesus would refer to his people. And of course, Cain was not. He was a tiller of the soil. He was a builder of cities. He was on the move, but he wasn't of God. He was born literally in that garden when Eve was seduced, yes, by the serpent. No, not a snake, an actual fallen angel in human form with genitalia. And that's why God said, do not partake of that tree, the tree of death. Friends, the tree of death is Satan. And what did Eve do? She was seduced. And so we read, mostly at funerals, we hear about man had for the short time to live. Man who was born of a woman. Very short in terms of time itself. But you see, the gift of God is eternal life. And only Christ the second Adam could accomplish that faith. Now, right now, let's go into that video showing how thankful we can be uh, for the representation in all aspects of American life today through Cain Seedline over true Israel in our country today. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. Did you know that there is a group of people out there that does an incredible amount of good for us and yet is truly underappreciated? Who are you talking about? Jews. Oh, so what did Jews do for us? The real question is, what don't Jews do for us? Well, let's start with money. You like money, right? Sure, who doesn't? Well, maybe you should check out who has been greasing the monetary machine. Look at the great people who have been busy heading the Federal Reserve, the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, and other large financial institutions. Wow, I knew Jews were good with money, but I didn't know they were responsible for running the world's money supply. Thanks, Jews. Well, what about entertainment and information? You like media, don't you? I sure do. Have you ever thanked the people who own almost all of the media outlets in the Western world? That's right. Jews are behind our movies, television, newspapers, magazines, radio, and more. They have been burdened with entertaining and informing us all. Men, women, children, and grandparents alike. And I don't think they get enough credit for their wonderful achievements. Wow. I never realized how much my mind has been shaped by Jewish brains. <laughs> Thanks, Jews! Now, you like buying things, right? Um, yeah, of course. Did you know that Jews play leading roles at many of our country's top corporations? 
Now, I already mentioned banks and media, but what about property managers, manufacturers, merchandisers, communications companies, technology titans, and the rest? You will find that they are all kosher, just like all of our food. You know, when you see the number of yarmulkes in the boardroom, it really makes you want to say, Thanks, Jews. You took the words right out of my mouth. And what about security? You want a government that protects you, right? Of course, but you mean to tell me that Jews are responsible for that, too? Now, some people do recognize that there are a lot of Jews working overtime within the government bureaucracies to pass fantastic legislation, regulating business, enhancing education, revolutionizing our military, and controlling dangerous guns. But what most do not realize is that Jews are so concerned with our security that they have dual citizens from Israel here working in top positions of our government, monitoring threats to our country, putting us first and foremost. That really is selfless of them. Thanks, Jews. And do you know who has been enriching our lives with delightful diversity over the years? I can take a guess. And you'd be right. Jews have been behind America's immigration policy and civil rights movement for decades upon decades, ensuring that our country is multicultural and vibrant. Without Jewish influence, this would be such a bland and boring place to live. We know who to thank for all of the wonderful new additions to our land. Thanks, Jews. They just care so much about making this a better place to live. I think you're really starting to get the picture. This group of people, only 2% of our population, has been leading the way in banking, media, corporations, government, and almost everywhere else. I just don't think enough people realize the great work that they are doing. This modest people, chosen by God, really needs to be recognized for their humanitarian achievements so that the people of our country and the rest of the world can stand united and speak with one voice, saying... Thanks, Thanks, Jews. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So now you get the, the picture. These uh, souls from Cain's seed line down to the present who will rule the world system, who are in control of all of the major institutions, the four hidden dynasties, will in fact consummate their power in Jerusalem, as the scriptures have indicated in this generation, the generation of the bad faith. Now, Jesus, okay, in Luke 20, as I was about to say before this uh, interlude, Jesus himself was questioned, his authority, by these people who said to him, from whence do you get your authority? And he says, well, where did John the Baptist get his from? From you, from men, or from God? And, of course, Jesus told the tale, the story, okay, this, this important message that he was giving to the scribes and the Pharisees who were ruling in the temple, he said to them there was the story of the tenants, the parable of the tenants. And Jesus talked about a man who planted a vineyard, and he planted that vineyard and hired some farmers to take it over. And the farmer would come and take care of the vineyard, but the tenants were in control, basically. The tenants were on the property, you see. And so he sent one of these workers, one of these laborers, one of these farmers to get a portion of that which they grew, the fruits of their labor. And instead they scourged him, they beat him, they mocked him, and they sent him off. So the owner sent another. And that other worker in the field came, and he too was scourged and beaten and sent his way. And another, the owner sent. And finally, finally what happened was these wonderful scribes and Pharisees said, wait a minute, let us counsel together. We don't need to keep the property under the tiller and under the control of the farmers of those whom the owner had sent. What if we were to kill the owner? Get rid of him. Then the inheritance would be ours. The vineyard would be all of ours. And they counseled together. Jesus is telling this to them. 
for they knew he was speaking of them, these Kenites, these sons of Cain. And so they wanted to kill him right then and there, lay hands on him, but they couldn't in the temple because, you see, Jesus had protection. He had the protection of the Father. And they knew, more importantly, as it says in Luke 20, that he had the people on his side. The people loved Jesus. And Jesus loves his people. He loves the people today. He loves you. Unfortunately, for them, of course, he has his wrath in store for them. For when he talks of the wrath upon them, he talks of the stone that crushes them. In this same chapter of Luke 20, where he's sitting in the temple and he's talking about these tenants, the lost tenants, who will be destroyed when he comes. For they are not his people. They are the people of Cain. And the people of Cain are Satan's children. Now, I know it's hard for people to understand that. It's not very easy. But I didn't say it. God said it. I'm only a messenger here. All I'm doing is conveying a message that he sent. Will there be redemption for the Kenites? That is up to the Kenite. When all of the knowledge of truth comes in the millennium, when this age is over and Jesus destroys this world system, this world age, upon his appearance at the seventh trump in Revelation, then he will begin the millennium. And then the knowledge for all will be without Satan, where he's bound, and Jesus will rule and his saints and all flesh converted into a new body, a spirit body, so that the witnessing for Christ will be much easier. And you see, all those who never had their, quote, first chance to know Christ, many of our relatives, many of the people that we know did not have the power, did not have the Holy Spirit to convict them. They cannot be responsible for blaspheming the Holy Spirit if they never had it. I mean the real Holy Spirit now, where they are understanding who they are and what they are in Jacob. A little complicated, undoubtedly. But nevertheless, folks, it's important that we understand this because it does apply to now, to today. How does the influence of the mass media and Hollywood in particular influence us? There are many good people in Hollywood. There are many good people who are Israelites, who are Adamic souls. They're Caucasian Israelites. And yet they don't know who they are and they don't know who the enemy is, but they work for the studio heads and the powerful, the elite, those like the, you know, the people like the Spielbergs and the Geffenbergs and, and the Katzenbergs and, of course, a whole host of others that control the major studio influences. And I think back to the life of one young man in particular who died at 32 years old, who was unfortunately addicted to heroin. Uh, he had seen his friends addicted to heroin, some of them, didn't learn from it, and was under that spell. He went down the dark side of Hollywood. And his name is Harold P. Pruitt. And we're going to put his pictures up on the screen right now, some of his pictures along with another actor from Italy who passed away October 1st, 2013. But Harold Pruitt, Many of them knew him as P, was known to many people, not by some of the films he made so much, although one in particular was Encounter with a Vampire. Nevertheless, it was the TV series on Fox, on Fox television in 1990, The Outsiders, where he became known as Steve. And uh, he also performed in the other television series on Fox, Hull High. A young man who comes from a Christian background from Alaska, 1969, was born in 1969 to uh, a family uh, that wanted him to get into show business. His mother particularly pushed him to get into various forms of entertainment. So they moved to California, and uh, he died in 2002, February 13th. I'm sorry, February 11th. A young man who was addicted to heroin, who began to get off of heroin, and then unfortunately went back on because of a problem that developed with someone that he loved. And he was a, a young man who had many girlfriends. He did have a child, and his son is also the father of a young girl. Now, 
fact of the matter is that he was a fine young man, I'm sure, throughout most of his life, a very caring and giving and loving person. Uh, and yet he could not resist the temptations, the problems, the pressures of life under that system. No time to do things, no time to be able to really soul search, but had the cross of Christ on him and had the, the lineage in his behalf, the lineage of the seed line from Adam through Jacob. The tragedy is, ladies and gentlemen, that he died at such a young age. His father died only two months or so later of a broken heart. And his mother, of course, is one of those who is still alive and well, surviving all of this, and runs a, a cafe, a very well-known place in America today. And uh, it was begun by the father and son. Um, again, a young man whom you could see who had a great potential, but it was time to bring him home. Uh, he reached the point where the influence over him was debilitating, and it did destroy his body much to the consternation of many. Now, on the other hand, we have the influence of the other actor there, with the golden hair, and of course he was um, Gemma. His name was Giuliano Gemma. In Italian, it's pronounced Gemma, not Gemma. In any event, here's a man born in 1938, um, September 2nd, perished October 1st, 2013, in an automobile accident. A stuntman, um, a boxer, kickboxer. Uh, he was also a singer, a dancer, a high wire performer. He was a sculptor. He was many things. A very multi-talented, again, European, white, or Caucasian Israelite who had many talents, many, many talents. But he did not live in America. He lived in Italy where the influence of the church, of the Catholic church, and the influence of Christianity was much greater, obviously, than in Los Angeles, California, in Hollywood. So you see, he had much going for him, plus the fact that he came from a, a generation at a time of pre-war Italy. And unfortunately, he did have the scar of one of the incidents because as a child, he actually picked up what was a bomb, and that bomb, one of the landmines that was actually planted there, undoubtedly by the Allies, uh, blew up in his face. So he, he had surgeries, and the scar still remained till his death. Nevertheless, he was known as Angel Face. Because of his handsome appearance, he actually appeared in over 102 different films, many television playing even Mussolini uh, toward the end of his career. You see, folks, the point I'm trying to make is that the influence of the church, the influence of Christianity, not necessarily the Catholic Church, but of Christ himself, is strong in certain parts of Europe today. And yet, it is now being given away. This Pope, Pope Francis, is talking about a United Nations of Religions, bringing together all of the religions that he can muster, you see, folks, with those within the Jewish state, such as Shimon Peres. And he's working toward that goal of bringing about a one world religion, which is necessary, as the scriptures tell us, the beast system will be a religious beast system and then succumb to Satan himself. Satan himself will rule in this last day. He will appear as a man, a man of sin, the Bible refers to him as. And the man of sin is Satan in a flesh body. Come back to assume his role, and his role will be cut short. We're told to five months. Five months, we're told, of persecution for the saints, for the called out ones, for the Zadok, those who will not bow the knee. And the 144,000, 12,000 from each tribe of true Israel, they will bow the knee, unfortunately, and then retrench at some point. When they are witnessed to by the Zadok, the 7,000 who will not bow the knee. Think of it. Out of 10 or 12 billion people, 7,000 God has reserved to himself. 
hard to believe, but it's true. Are you one of them? Are you one of those who will not bow the knee? When Satan comes as the false Jesus, he will come not with a pitchfork, not with horns. He will come as a beautiful creature, a man performing miracles out of the sky. And the world will say, that's Jesus. He's returned. Who are these scoundrels who are saying that's not the real Jesus? Who are they? They're blasphemers. Take them to Jerusalem. Behead them. And folks, many of our friends and relatives will gladly take us and bring us to Jerusalem saying, he's Jesus. We must honor him. We must do what he wants us to do. This is how bad things are going to get, okay? But we're prepared. We're prepared in our hearts and our minds because the seals have been given to us. Once the seals are given in the mind, you cannot be deceived. This is why 666 refers to the seals and the vials and the trumpets. And seven is God's number. Seven. Seven trumpets. The seventh trumpet is the trumpet when Jesus returns to the earth in flaming fire, taking vengeance upon them that know not God, nor obey the gospel that he has given. Six, 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 seven, seven, seven. Friends, don't look for a barcode. Don't look for a computer blue chip or some other kind of chip, an RFID chip in the hand or under the skin or in the head. It's in the mind and it's in the work that you will be doing for Satan, the false Messiah. The false Messiah comes as Jesus. He's a substitute. Do you know what the word antichrist means translated? It means instead of Christ. Instead of him, posing as him. Just as those who say they are Israelites and are not are described as hypocrites by Christ himself. Don't be accounted with the hypocrites meaning play actors, role players, those who say they are something they are not. Is it becoming clear now? Cain's influence on this world system, on Jacob Israel, on Europe, the United States, Australia, all of these nations of the world that have been infected, if you will, with the disease of Talmudic Judaism, Zionism, one worldism, globalism, are actually victims, just as these people have been victims uh, the Harold Pruitts of the world, victims of the seed line that corrupts the soul. But the soul belongs to God. He will be resurrected, just as all will be resurrected to be given the Spirit of God in them, and then they will make their decision for Christ as opposed to Satan, you see? So there is no fear. There is no need to fear, Friends, this age and the influence of Cain's seed line on all of the world's populations, all of God's creation. For Jesus is in control, and only God can destroy the soul, not the body only, but the soul. Satan can destroy the body, but he cannot destroy the soul. The hope is in Christ, Yeshua Messiah, repentance. Unless you become as a little child, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. I hope this has helped some, has given some pause to understand that this world system is basically God's world. He created it. It fell. It fell in Genesis 1, 1, and 2. He recreated the world. We have a new world, and we're living in this new world now that is soon to be brought to an end when the third earth age does begin, when Jesus himself rules in the millennial kingdom and then the end. After that, after that's over. Sorry about that. Getting a little excited. Don't forget our special documentary that's coming up November 9th, November 16th, Sunday on Interconnect Channel, Cox 13 and Verizon Channel 32 on Taboo, Myths About World War II that you need to know. Time's up. Thank you all for watching The Deadly Experiment. Rick Adams. Goodbye and Yahweh bless. Good